Welcome to King Said So, Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So. Africans can unite your Pan-Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Ceremonies. I'm told you are also acting mayor, comrade uh, Ntabiseng. Uh, government representative. I was told you are representing the president, but you are saying you are not. So I'm a bit confused. Comrade Blade in Zimande. Uh, comrade, the premier of Gauteng in absentia, I'm told he is held up somewhere. Comrade Banyaza Lisupi, <coughs> ANC delegation led by the general secretary general, Comrade Baluna, SACP delegation led by Comrade Solima Paila. Christian Institute, represented by Comrade Priscilla, Councillors of Ekuduleni, Comrade and Guests. I would like, before I continue with my, speak, with my speech, to acknowledge the following High Commissioners. They mean a lot to me. I was born and brought up in Lesotho. I happen to be a South African by marriage. So the Home Affairs Minister is not here. Maybe he might decide to withdraw my citizenship. <laughs> uh, Ambassador, the High Commissioner of Lesotho, His Excellency, Mr. Nzime Jafita. So now you can see my people are here, so I'm covered. SG, you can't touch me. I'm protected today. My dear sister, High Commissioner, Ms. Mazuba Monze. As you know, we spend all our time in Zambia. Zambia is our second home. We are where we are, like other countries, because of their contribution. In Zambia, we are treated like Zambians. We are very naughty, we are young, but we were never sent to prison. Thank you very much, and thanks to all the Zambians. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Embassy of the Republic of China, Minister Councillor Liu Kayang. I don't have to explain, we all know the role that the Chinese played in our struggle up to today. The majority of you politicians go to political school in China. Thank you. I would like to give them a big applause. Today is 31 years since my husband was assassinated. The democratic government is 30 years. On the 29th of May, we are going for elections. And because this is a municipal function, and in the municipality, all political parties are represented, I have decided my speech today is going to be nonpartisan out of respect for the political parties in the council. Thank you for your understanding. I remain a member of the ANC. But. And 
and because it's a government function, I'll be non-partisan, but you all know where my heart is. I'm ANC until I die. <laughs> In the last 30 years, okay, the reason also why I'm non-partisan, it is because when Chris was assassinated, it was not only the ANC, the SACP, who were upset, who mourned his death, but it was all South Africans from all walks of life. So his commemoration, I want to believe, is for all of us as South Africans, but, the commemoration is led by SACP and ANC, but he was the people's person. That's a fact. Uh, in 30 years, there has been a lot of work done by our government compared to what it was during apartheid. However, in our people's lives, a lot still has to be done. We have challenges of electricity, load shedding, which has contributed to job losses and factories closed. Semi blind, you sorry, excuse me. NASA has increased tariffs by 12.4%. If rounded up, it is 13% SG. Our electricity bills have gone up despite load shading. They are ridiculously high. Residential rates are not different, though our roads are full of potholes and our city is very dirty. The majority of us cannot afford ESCOM bills, and if you can't pay, they cut off your electricity. 35 billion was used by ESCOM to buy diesel in one year. To me, this is lack of planning by ESCOM management and the department responsible for ESCOM. The amount of 35 billion could have been used on renewable energy, solar and wind. Our electrical gadgets are broken because of load shedding. And the insurance companies sometimes are reluctant to pay us all because of load shedding. The cost of living is extremely high. Food prices have gone up. Petrol prices have gone up. Transportation has gone up. Why is the government not cushioning our people on electricity? The government should provide affordable electricity. Why is the government not subsidizing our people on staple food? After so many years, electricity problem has not been solved. Competition. My personal view is that there is no political will to solve the challenges we have as a country. Now we are told the load shedding will go to level 16. Really? God help us. We are prisoners of hope. Savendas died in prison for killing fair food. In our democratic country, Someone who made us a family of five gets 15 years with parole. Is that justice? This is not an attack on what I'm going to say is not an attack on NPA. But however, we have to speak the truth for a change. Let's stop being nice to each other. Or politically correct. NPA arrest the alleged wrongdoers with all publicity. When the court date comes, NPA is always asking for postponement because they have not completed their investigations. Why make arrests 
when investigations are not completed. There are court cases which have been going on for years, all because the NPA will ask for a postponement as they are not done with investigations. Is that fair for those people and their families? Because remember, those people have not been found guilty. Justice delayed is justice denied. My concern is we as South Africans are not preserving the legacy of black people. E.g., it has been decided without us being consulted as a nation that Dingani's day is now called Day of Reconciliation. Shadville Massacre is called Human Rights Day. Robben Island, where people suffered over many years, is now a waiting venue. Why do we change our history? Shadville Massacre happened. Why do you decide to call it human rights. My problem is our children will never know history, except I think most parents are doing that. I decided to tell my grandchild the truth, that that human rights day is nonsense. It's Sharpville massacre. People were killed. So I don't understand where we got the human rights. Nobala, please just on our behalf, make sure history is recorded correctly for our great-grandchildren. It is not mine I've taught the correct history. The, uh, in 2002, cabinet appointed the electoral task team, which was chaired by Mr. Frederick van Slabet. Its task was to draft a new electoral legislation required by the Constitution. The report was published in 2003 January, but Parliament did not implement its recommendation and drafted a new legislation. The present electoral system is working against accountability because proportional representation hand power to political bosses, which in turn disempowers the votes. MPs feel beholden to their political parties rather than the people who elected them. Voters should be able to elect their representatives directly who are accountable to them, not to political parties. I strongly suggest, Nobala, that we revisit Mr. Slabe's report. Now, I want to go back to the load shedding. I was watching TV one time, there was a debate. I can't remember what the subject was. But one of the MPs made a statement as follows. Load shedding is not the word, it's not the end of the world. What an unfortunate and reckless statement, speaking from position of power and privilege. My point is, people are suffering because of load shedding. The 2023 matriculants studied with candlelight, and somebody stands up and makes this unfortunate statement. Now, if that person was elected by a constituency, I bet my last cent they would have recalled her. But why did I see MP slept hands for that? It's unfortunate. I would like to make an appeal to whoever becomes the president after elections, not to have a bloated cabinet. Honestly, we are suffering. Some of the deputy ministers, we don't know who they are. We hardly see them. We know ministers. But can South Africa afford a bloated cabinet? My answer is no. My family and I knew that we had a husband and father that was willing to die for the cause he believed in. We not only accepted that, but we embraced it 
because we loved him and the vision he had for South Africa. It was shared family vision and desire. Today, we had even more because it was not, it was not worth his life. It was not worth me being a widow. It was not worth my child, my children being fatherless and his grandchildren not knowing him. This government has failed him and all of us. Countless of our people have died for our so-called freedom. I can tell you this. I can tell you this is not what they had in mind as they laid down their lives. In conclusion, I would like to read what Chris said. When I was doing this research about his speeches, I found this, what he said, but couldn't find the date. I could not find the date or where he was talking. However, this is what he said. And I would like all people who are going to be on the ground campaigning to listen very, very carefully. It's important for all of us as a country. This is what Chris said, open quotes. Comrades, you must not fear and try to suppress opposing political ideas. Even if they come from opposing political opponents of other organizations, you must improve your level, your level of debates to expose bankruptcy of the ideas of your opponent without using violence and vulgar language. The use of labels and insults in a political debate shows the poor political education. In fact, I doubt comrades who jump into labeling and insult if they are truly schooled in our liberation culture of debate and political education. Close calls. Now, 29th, we should all go and vote and vote for the political parties so that our democracy becomes strong. Thank you very much. Amanda. Amen.